Hi ladies and gentlemen, Sean Davies is a Colorado Rainsman. I am here with Raphael, my five-year-old uh, Arabian, and today we're going to do um, really an introduction to ground driving. A lot of people have been asking me about ground driving and how do I want to work on a horse getting collected up and start building up their top line and their abdominal muscles and really starting getting that rear end up behind them. Um, there's ways to do it just from the saddle. A lot of performance horse people do that. But then for classical work, dressage work, um, people working with young horses that don't want to be up on their back uh, and, and get in trouble doing these things, um, ground driving is a great way to build your, your horse's uh, top line and his muscles. So. Raphael kind of had a little break for a while. You know, we started using him in lessons again, and um, Danny is uh, falling in love with him. Wants to get him uh, built up to ride him quite a bit more. So we've really been working on getting him off of pushing on that bit because he was starting to really reach out, be a little unbalanced, and push on that bit. So I have taken him back to ground driving. Now I have. My sur single is this heavy duty. This is an Amish made sur single, so it's a heavy duty leather with good heavy duty rings on it. Um, if you have one of the store bought sur singles with nylon and everything, uh, they'll work just fine. Over time, the rings tend to tear off them. This has been in use for quite a while. My driving reins, there's a lot of different driving reins out there. These happen to be. Uh, you can get these on Amazon a lot. They're they're uh, a rubberized or vulcanized uh, nylon rein. They have some weight to them, and that's going to be important. Some people have these real light cotton reins, and when you need to put some pressure on that horse, there's nothing there. It's like a limp noodle. So I don't really like those, and I don't like reins that are 50 and 60 feet long. You've got too much rain in your hand. You don't get the feel. You're trying to not to get your legs caught up. These are about 20 to 22 feet long. They're just fine for what I'm doing. Um, now you have different rings on the sur single. You have an upper ring here and a lower ring. Ring. These are going to be your primary rings. These others I don't use. They're for for uh, buggy driving where they're going to tie this horse's head up or side reins that you're going to clip a, a martingale to, well I don't use those things. I want to work them. This position is more of where your riding position will be. This position a lot of times when I'm starting a horse, I'm going to run the rein straight back through here on each side of their hip and get them to learn to give to the rein with their body motion going forward. Now the beauty of ground driving is you can be behind them, put that energy towards their hip, and drive them forward and have a little bit more leverage without being up on their back, without getting in trouble. If the horse wants to fight and rear and do whatever, you're not yanking on them, you're just holding they're figuring out where that bit is. They start getting off of it and start gaining elevation in their step. That's what we're looking at. I'm going to demonstrate a lot of that. Now this horse has done this quite a bit. So I could start him off on the lower rings and be right behind him and go and he'd be fine. He wouldn't try to run away and get all scared because you're behind him. But I'm going to show you what I would do. Just like I did with uh, our big bucking stock horse, uh, Toothless, the other day. We did a first ground drive with him, and I start up here on these upper rings, and I'm going to show you. We just take this rein, I'm going to drop one here, and I am going to feed this rein through this upper ring. Make sure this isn't all twisted. Now I'm going to double up my rein here and drape it over his back. Then I'm going to come around here, do the same thing. I 
and double it and drape it over his back. Now, the importance of side reining. If I've got a horse that wants to run off, I can be in the center of my round pin and I usually start him off in a round pin and later on I'm going to do a lot of ground driving out in the open arena working on turning and being balanced in our turns. But I'm going to start here. I'm going to bring this rein over his back. I'm going to feed my rein out. Now I can start in a position anywhere from directly off his side to slightly back. If he took off running around, I can stay up with him. I can just hold the reins and keep up with him. If you start off way back here and you get a frightened horse that's never done this before, they can haul off, spin around a lot, you know, pull the reins out of your hand. If you have another person, you can leave your rope halter on and have that person out here next to you to introduce them, driving them forward. Have a little bit more control. I don't typically do that. I don't need to. I've done this a little bit. But if you are doing it on your own, you can always get another helper to help you out. They can help you in your turns. They can help you do a lot of things. Now, see, he wants to face me, okay? I'm going to use my right hand here. Push that eye. Get big. Drive him off. Be off here to the side. Look forward. This is important. If you stare at your horse all the time, they're going to stop. They're going to not know where to go. I'm going to say, let's go forward. So now, you see, we're just moving along. And the way I hold these reins, I hold them lightly in my hand. I can grip with my fingers here. And I use my index fingers as, as my input method as much as I can. So I want to have a nice light rein. If I want to ask him to give me that nose a little bit, I usually raise my inside hand a little bit higher than my outside hand. I want to shape him up right here. I'm going to use my index finger to massage. Right there, I'm going to say, go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward. And raise that hand up. Say, we're going forward. Now I'm going to ask him to drop that nose a little bit right there. Raise my hand again. Move him forward. Right there. And then I'm going to toss him the reins and let him relax and walk out. Now these are great exercises for a young horse. Now what if, uh, what if your horse wanted to trot off? Well, okay. He's trotting. I can still walk fairly easy. And you see now that he's been back in the game with this a little bit, he drops his head right in the position right there. I'm going to raise my right rein a little bit, get him, get his eye inside to me a little bit more. I want him moving straight around the round pin with a vertical position or a little bit in front of vertical, like right there. That's beautiful. Now, what if he cantered? See, I can work on a canter and getting him a little bit more balanced. You see he's dropping his head down and whatnot right now. I don't really care about that. He's moving around. I can start putting a little pressure, get his head up. I want his rear end driving up underneath him. Boy. So the side reining position allows you to up with the horse without having to hang on to him and pull him back a lot. So if I want to bring him down, I don't pull on my reins and we use my body because we've already done all the work in our round pin and our ground work. Good boy. Now I'm going to ask him to go forward. Raise my inside rein. That's telling him, get ready to go, otherwise I throw a little pressure right at his hip with that inside rein. Now, I want to turn him. We've done this work with our lead rope. So I'm going to raise my inside rein a little bit. I'm going to look at my turn. I'm going to keep walking towards this rear end. 
right there. He's looking, he's thinking, he's thinking, he's still thinking. There, he figured it out. I'm going to drive him. That's a pretty ugly turn right here. Drive, drive, I'm going to ride him in a circle right here. See, my outside rain doesn't have a lot on it right now. Now I'm going to straighten out and drive him forward. Get that a little better. I'm going to look where I want to go. 1001, 1002, 1003. He's already going where I want. Now I'm going to look left. Let him run into my out inside rain. Let him run into it. He figured it out. Bring that rain over. See, that's good. See, if I put a perfect horse in here, you wouldn't see how to fix it up, how to stick with it. So now I'm back to raining on this side. We're walking. I'm going to ask him to give a little bit. I'm going to raise these reins. My left hand's going to be a little higher. I'm going to work my finger. And he's going to say, okay, I got you. Let's go. Good boy. Now I've got nothing on these reins. I'm just holding them here. And he's doing that all on his own. Good boy. Good boy. Now I'm going to let him relax. Just kind of throwing some leaf, throwing some rain. I can keep walking. And he's finding that perfect spot for him to keep his head and doing it on his own. Now I'm going to pick him up. I'm going to try to get a good transition into a pair. Good. Now, he is starting to learn to get his rear end up underneath him a little bit. So being an Arab, he tends to get his head way up high, push a bit on the bit, put his legs way back, extends his hind legs back in the canter. Well, I'm working on getting his balance up Strengthening that top line in his abdominals. Come on. Come on. And starting to get his hind legs to reach further up underneath him to bring that elevation. Now all that is to accept the weight of a rider and a saddle on his back. Good boy. He's got a nice elevated canter there. And I'll bring him down. Good boy. Good boy. Yep. Now, I'm going to ask him to hoe. So I'm going to get my shoulders slightly in front of my hips as I roll my seat up underneath me. Ooh. Ooh. And now I'm going to back up. I'm going to move my feet. I'm not pulling him back. I'm moving my feet and letting him feel me come back. There we go. Let's pet him for a second. Now that's basically our warm-up. Just doing some side rein and getting him loosened up. I don't want to go straight to really pushing the elevation on him right now. Now, if this was a horse like he is that has done this a little bit, and I wanted to start off, I often will start off with the reins down these lower rings. It gives me a straighter line from the bit right back to my hands. But it also tends to have them lower their head. And that's for a different, often that's for driving a card or something else where they're having to lean into a, into a harness. This is our more typical uh, riding position with our hands. So I use these rings up here a little bit more often. Now I can go from side reining as your horse gets more comfortable. I'm going to get start getting back in these other positions. Back at more of an angle. Back straight behind him. Now if I'm straight behind him the lower rings are a good place to be. I have the reins on each side of him. 
but I'm just going to keep them up here for a minute. I eventually want to be able to be right here with my horse and get him to pee off, passage, anything else I want him to do with me walking along beside him. But I also want to be able to work my reins lightly and get him collected up. Collected up. Good. Now let's get him going and we're going to work on his elevation a little bit. I'm going to raise this inside rein, increase my energy, wait for him, put a little pressure there. There we go. You don't have to smack the holy bejesus out of them at first. If they don't go, I'll increase my energy. That raising of the hand is the first indication that you want him to move forward. You're looking past him. Now I'm in a good position right here because I can see his body, see his feet, put my energy towards his hip, help him drive forward, hold those reins lightly in my hand, work them lightly. Let's see if I can tickle that, that bit. If he backs off the pressure and slows his forward down, then I press him. I press him. And let's say, hey, give to me and keep your forward just like that. Now I didn't ask him to trot, but right here he is soft in my hands. I got two fingers on those reins. He's soft in my hands and he's getting his feet up underneath him. He's got a nice arch neck. He's got a good head placement. If he starts getting too far behind the bit, I may drive him up underneath it a little bit and he'll raise his head up. Good boy. Now I'm going to stop him for a second. Right past this gate. Don't like stopping him at the gate. Ooh. I don't stop my feet until he stops his. I'm going to come up here. I want to check his throat latch. Make sure. Always make sure you've got two fingers when I'm ground driving. I might even go one notch looser so when they really get arched and collected up, they don't start choking themselves with that throat latch. Okay, let's get going, young man. There you go. You see how he moves forward right there off of the raising, raising of that hand. He says, I'd like to come in. Okay, what do you do if he comes off? That's a, this is a great learning opportunity. You don't pull your outside rein, you hold it, you work your inside rein like I'm wiggling it. I'm going to leg yield this horse to the rail, right there, drive him forward. That was a great learning experience for him and teaching opportunity for me. Now I'm going to ask him to pick up his energy a little bit and we are going to start working on some elevated trot. What he loses in extension, he's going to gain in elevation. Now I'm going to pick up my energy, give him one kiss. Nice soft trot right there, very light on my reins. So we're building it. Good boy. Now, when I'm out in the big open arena, I'm doing turns, I'm working circles with this. I should be able to walk while he's trotting. If I want to gain some real elevation, I can give him a cadence, a pee-off cadence with kisses. Get a little action in that hind end. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. Let's give him a little slack. Let him relax a second. Very good. All right. So now we're we're still working on our elevation, and he has a tendency to get his nose behind the bit a little bit when I put pressure. So what you do is you work yourself up. Put. If I have to smack his butt a little bit, 
can get him up and get his neck up, I will. See, he tends to roll that head up and try to get off the pressure of the bit. Well, that's his body putting pressure. I'm not pushing on him, or I'm not pulling on him. So he wants to get way behind the bit there. I've got to get him up off of that, up off of that. He's trying to do his lavalier. <laughs> See, he wants to roll back instead of, and get his weight over his shoulder rather than over his midsection. Now we're starting to think about it. Yep, come on, get up there. <laughs> He's finding it ugly steps right now. This horse later on in his life will do some really incredible stuff. I can't push it too hard right now. But for normal horseback riding, if you want the slowest, nicest, sweetest trot you ever wanted, watch what happens now when I've worked him at that slow pace and get him moving. Now he's dropping his neck, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some pressure on that rear end get those legs working. He's trying to push me a little bit, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push that rear end. Come on. There you go. Now he's up. Oh, he's pushing again. I'm going to say get off of my hands. That's beautiful. Good boy. And boom. Now, you saw him working and hopping up a little bit there. Well, I've taught this horse that he can do a lavade, and he can start doing lavades where he's going to sit back on his ankles or sit back on his haunches with his feet up. Really get his balance, but I cannot push that movement. He's not strong enough. He's not there yet. But I want to just show him how to start it. These are things that in classical dressage, that's high school movements. But you're not going to get that out of a five-year-old right now. You've got to have a really good base. His conformation, his legs are a little far back sometimes for things. And I'm working his, his uh, body to get a little bit better position so he can do some of these things. He's a wonderful horse. He's super smart. Now, if I want to change directions with him, Let's go. There are several ways to do that. Let's say, one, we're on the fence. Okay. Now I'm going to look across the arena. I'm going to raise my inside rein. I'm going to push myself through that rump. Now I'm going to look right. And now he switched. And I bring that rein over. And we've gone the other way. And that was beautiful. Now we've got to work on this right side just a little bit. But I'm actually just going to show a couple things here and then I'm going to put Miss Danny Scott on the long lines because she is really the one who's riding this horse the most and she's starting to get the feel for it. So I'm going to do a little instruction with her while I work the camera. But first I'm going to do these last couple little things with him. I'm going to see if he'll balance up for me here. He's pushing a little bit. Get off me. Now I'm going to ask him to perk up a little bit. Give him that cadence. Pick those feet up, young man. <laughs> He's getting it. Very good. See, that's the beginning part. That's a mild passage. It's not perfect. As I reduced that energy, 
got him to almost stand still, he was almost working on a piot. That's picking up your diagonal pairs and putting them down. He said, I'd like to run away now. No. Now, if I wanted to change directions another way, I'm going to stop him. See who. Now, I'm going to get this rein over on this side. I'm going to bend him to the left. Bend him to the left, put a little pressure on his hip, and I'm going to ask him to leg yield. I want to get in that left eye, push him here, push him here. See, he's out of balance right there. Now let me get him straight. Now I'm going to ask him to move his body to his right. There we go. And it took a lot to get him set up there. we got to do that again. So let's do a leg yield off to the left. Ask him to move from the right side here. I'll move that rear end. See, he's trying to maneuver to get me in this right eye. There we go. There we go. Good boy. And drive him off. Now that was much better. Now I'm going to work again. I'm going to need to back up. Man. Now I'm going to stop him here, get him in my left, in his left eye, or get me in his left eye. I'm going to move that hip. Now I'm going to get over here and ask him to move that whole body, stopping his forward. I'm going to motivate that. Now, got out of position. I got to smack him there. There we go. There we go. Don't do that. There we go. So his left side needs a little more work. But you can teach these horses so many things with these long lines. And boom. Good boy. Now when I approach my horse, I don't want to go straight up to his butt. Because wherever the front of your body goes, it means go that way. So I'm going to drop my head, look around, circle and face the rear end and pet him. Pet his butt. Good boy. His rein got a little twisted. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to put Danny on the, on the reins. And I'm going to instruct her while we uh, do the finish up of the video. So stay tuned. All right, Miss Danny Scott is on the long lines. Now she is going to ask Raphael to move forward. Now first, you're a little close, so I'd, I'd slide back about three or four more feet on those reins. Good. Now ask him to go forward. Raise that inside rein. Raise it out away from your body towards me. Good. There you go. Good. Now try not to lean your body back into the reins. Just walk with straight and let your index fingers do the talking. So if he comes in right there, you just raise that inside rein and wiggle it and get him to leg yield back to the rail. Very good. Now that looks real nice. He's walking forward. He's in a vertical position. He's not leaning into the bit too terribly much. That's real good. Now try to make sure you keep looking past him on the ground in front of him. Very good. Now she's asking him for a trot. That looks good. Now you try to slow your feet down a little bit. Let him match you. You don't have to match him. So right there, if he pushed on you, I want you to slide your hands back on those reins a bit. Get a little bit more distance. Even more. I want you to go back about three feet. Good. Now, pick up his energy, so raise your inside arm.
Now, see, he's trying to drive through. I want you to smack him on that left hip with that rein. Drive him up underneath there. There you go. Drive him up underneath. Now, you may be holding that outside rein too short. There. Now, see, he's really trying to roll over and get a, behind the bit. So raise your hands up, and r both hands up higher. In that position, raise your hands up and drive him up into it. Lift, work your left rein, get his eye to the inside of the arena to balance him up a little bit. Raise, work that left hand. Raise it. Raise it higher. And get him up. Boy, he's really pushing on you. So look past him. Look past him. So we are working on Danny getting him moving forward without going under the bit. She's motivating him. He's at a nice walk now. Now she's going to ask him to pick up a trot. That's better. Now slow yourself down a little bit. Slow yourself down. Look past him. Now right there, I want you to motivate that rear end a little bit. There. See, remind him that he's not to roll over. Now that's a big change right there. That's a big change. That's beautiful. Now ease your energy down, let him walk. Good. Very good. You have to be able to motivate him. See, you're not going to hurt him by smacking him on that butt, but you've got to motivate that inside hind up into it. Otherwise, they roll that head over and get underneath themselves. And we don't want them getting their chin to their chest. This isn't roll cur. That's beautiful. Now I'm looking at this horse's leg starting to reach up underneath him and push his body upwards. That's beautiful. Now slow your body down. You're, you're really running behind him. He's got, he's got to find that bit. You've got to tell him where the bit is so he can find it and get off of it. Now we're talking, now we're talking, now. Relax. He just immediately goes under the bit though, so how do I get him to transition? It's going to be a time consuming thing. You're going to have to take your time. Okay. Okay. If he goes under that bit, I'm going to motivate him back up and get his elevation rather than his, than his, than his, he's pushing his shoulder forward, not his legs up underneath him. Now let him walk right there. Wow. Exhale. Wow. There, see the transition was much better. He didn't get up underneath it. So try, if, if he gets under the bit after a long ways of trotting, make your, your trot shorter. Make the distance traveled shorter. Okay. okay. Why don't you try to get a turn and go the other way? So look where you want to go. There. That's it. That's it. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. Change. Let him run into that rein. Go towards his hip. Drive him with your right hand now. That was pretty good. Good boy. Nice leg yield to the rail. Now, now if you look at your hands right now. Oh. <laughs> ah, there you go. See, that was what was getting his head to the outside. There you go. So that's the important thing. If your inside hand is lower than your outside hand, you're going to put them out of balance. And that's what a lot of people do when they're riding. They raise that outside hand, tip that nose outside, and your horse is completely out of balance. Now look at, look at his eye. Is his inside ear closer to you or his outside ear? Inside. Now his inside ear is right. Good. Okay. Now let him find that bit. Try to keep your, your foot speed the same foot speed when you ask him to pick up. Okay. There. Now let him walk. There you go. See, you had great transition up, great transition down. Get a stop right here. Curl your rear end up underneath you. 
Nice stop. Move your feet. He immediately wants to his middle. Move look down and pick up your feet and walk in place backwards. Good boy. And stop. Good boy. Very good. Very good. Okay. I would say that's a good little lesson right there. So we're gonna we're gonna finish up with him. We'll be right back. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so I've I've shown you some basics and actually some higher level movements here. Now the important thing about ground driving, don't just go out and throw a snaffle bit in your horse's mouth and start ramming them through it. It's not gonna it's not gonna do anybody any good. If you've got anybody who's knowledgeable in your area, learn. If you want to come here and learn, let me know. I do in-house clinics where you stay here at the ranch and we'll we'll work with you on two, three, four days, whatever is good for you. Bring a couple friends, make the cost cheaper. It's one of the best exercises you can do for your horses and it's also getting to be almost a lost art. Um, ground driving was an integral part of all your work with horses earlier on and now it's it's just fading away. I use it a lot because I see great benefits for it. So Raphael, you're gonna see more of him down the road. He is a great little horse. The ground driving is really gonna help his uh, his top line and getting those muscles built up. Um, you'll see some more advanced things as we work with him a little bit more. If you have any questions about ground driving, don't be afraid to, to send me an email. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see some more. Sean Davies with Colorado Rainsman.